uh, for his own company, um, Birth Not Worth, and he does a lot of churches and everything. <coughs> he does everything. Nice. So, um, yep. We're on? So we're live. Good morning, everybody. Um, Brendan and I had a great trip to uh, Atlanta. Kind of really liked it. It was almost like going to New England, but warm. Like they have mountains and trees and colors. I'm like, I could go there. <laughs> I was asking Josh, how long would it take to get to your house to Atlanta, right? Um, so I don't know. We'll see what happens. Every time I go someplace that's not Massachusetts, I want to I want to live there, right? The only place I've been where I didn't want to stay was China. <laughs> and now you can see why. I, I didn't know. I wasn't a Christian at the time, but I was prophesying forward that you don't want to be there, right? So who wants to live in a communist country? Not right? So... Let's go, people. Is that a trick question? Chinese yeah. people. Well, they don't. I don't think they want to live there. I don't think they want to. Live there. there are several communist countries still. I, I think. Um, I think they love their country. They yeah. just wish that their government was better. Yeah, I would agree with that. Um, but they have to love their country because they live in a communist country. They have no choice. They have to love it. So hopefully, we'll uh, man up, and this won't become a communist country, right? Um, did anybody get a word today? Abby. Share with us. God loves us more. I mean, He loved us to, so He could, and He gave us His own That's right. Abby always has a word. See, if you're in the ward, you don't have to be 50 years old, like some people here. You could just be a kid and uh, and read. I didn't look at you, Dean. Wow, Dean's all nervous. <laughs> Dean's all paranoid. I would have said plus 50 if I was talking about you. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be so kind to just give you 50 even, right? Um, so, yeah, if you're in the Word, people say, how do you get words all the time? If you're in the Word, you'll get a word. God will speak to you this morning. Um, there's a lot of sensitivity around the vaccine and, and all that stuff. And, you know, dealing with my oldest daughter, you know, um, you know, works uh, for Bristol Myers Squibb and... Uh, we're, yeah, I, I'm going to find out what products they're. I'm going to start emailing them some some words of just, you know, just saying I disagree with their policies and stuff. But anyway, yeah, it's okay to stand up for companies. We don't, just because you're a Christian doesn't mean you can't speak against bad stuff. You should speak it. Just speak it in love, you know, set people free. But, you know, she, the Lord was showing me that so many people, their companies and people around them, you can say, I have a word from you. And, you know, there are some charlatans out there for sure. But a lot of us, we hear from the Lord because that's normal Christianity. If I didn't hear from God all the time, I couldn't make it through a day. You know, my, my days have been starting off not the way I want since I've been home. I've been nothing but phone calls first thing in the morning. It happened this morning, 7.20, my shift leader called in sick. It's, we got a class there. So, you know, I'm focusing on the Lord the second I wake up, and now I'm trying to, you know, find schedules and... and uh, jumble things, so you got to stop and pray for a minute, and the Lord will, will guide you on what to do. But Jesus said, "My sheep hear my voice, right, and, and and they and they obey." If you are working for a company, and again, everyone's at a different spot that says you didn't hear from the Lord, they they can't tell you you didn't hear from the Lord because these are all secular people. Most of you didn't hear from God. Well, just because you don't even you're, you know they want to argue that you didn't hear from a God that they say they don't believe in. And so um, I would always, at all cost, recommend you listen to the Lord. It's, it may seem like the wrong decision. It may seem rough. You may not see what's going to happen the next step. But if you listen to the Lord, he's not going to tell you to stand up to the tyrannical government and then leave you homeless. He's not going to do it. Um, so whatever it is, maybe he's going to tell you to take 10 vaccines, you know. Probably that's not going to be the Lord, I'm going to suggest. Um, but uh, the Lord always leads you to freedom, right? So uh, the, the uh, freedom, God, God is a free God. When people say, well, you give your life to Christ, it puts all this stipulation. It sets you free. I did not want to be a Christian. Even I became, people, most people know my story. I started teaching creation before I became a Christian because I'm like, I'm not going to wear a suit and have a fake smile and, um, and be in a box and have laws and rules. I mean, my oldest daughter, Val, she knows I do not like laws and rules, you know, and she inherited all of that from me <laughs> with a one good thing. Um, so I would just say, 
listen to the Lord, and if you're having trouble deciphering or need help standing or people to stand and pray, that's why you should come to church. If you're only watching online, uh, unless there's a really good reason, you, it's not saying this church, sure, we'd love to have you here, but go to a Bible-believing, I'm talking spirit-filled with the gifts of free to operate, a full church, not a partial church, and get your butt in church. And I have more people, I was just talking to a guy, you know, I mentioned it last week, and then, you know, they say, well, I don't need to go to church. But somebody, somebody at that church probably needs a word for, of encouragement from you. They probably need a blessing from you. So don't, don't be selfish. Uh, go to church. If you don't want to do it for yourself, do it for someone else, you know. If you're a spouse and your spouse is getting up on Sunday and going to church and you're sitting home, get over yourself, all right? Because marriage is, when you got married, you became one. And the person who's going to church, they're following the Lord, and you need to stop being so prideful. I feel this is a direct word from the Lord because this wasn't planned. You need to stop being so prideful and get your butt out of bed and get to church with your family. If you're sitting at home while part of your family goes to church, that's terrible. Um, knock it off. I'm just going to tell you the way it is. It's not, uh, it's not godly. It's not manly. It's not being a good husband. It's not being a good wife, if that's the situation. Um, and so the family should not be broken going to church. And that includes my own family, so I've got to beat some of my children after this. Mildly, unless they fight back. <laughs> so, um, Josh, can you beat some of my kids for me after? Thank you. So, Josh is only here for a week. He can beat them and jump on a plane and fly out. Um, can I share something real quick? Yeah, go ahead. Um, during worship, it's just very simple. Um, when you're going through anything or you're trying to navigate something in life, very simple things we were reminded of in worship today that God is good, mm -hmm. God is love, and God is faithful. And um, as this church is in John 10.10, 10, that um, the enemy is the one that comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But Jesus said, I came to, to give life and life more abundantly. But just to remember that God is good and he is faithful to see you through whatever you have to walk through. Just continue to look at him. And um, the enemy just wants to stop you, but just filter your circumstances in your life through those two things. God is love and God is good. Yeah, that's a, that's a great word. And like you said, if you keep your eye on Jesus, you won't be looking to the side and getting seeing all the distractions. So good word, Jeremy. A um, couple of things real quick. Uh, tithe and offering. Uh, for the people that are here, there's a yellow bucket in the back, of course, behind the donuts and everything. And people that want to give online, it's zoo.church. I've been teaching about tithe and offering uh, the last uh, few weeks a little bit before I preach. You know, if, you're, if God puts it on your heart, if you're if giving is biblical, tithing does go to the New, te to the new uh, Covenant, the New Testament. It uh, didn't pass away or anything like that. And someday we'll do a, a teaching on that. But um, God does never, never wants you to give out of guilt or obligation. You have to feel, when you write that check or put cash in the thing, however you're doing it, you need to be happy about it. If you're, you know, struggling uh, and you're not happy to give, the Lord, the Lord doesn't want that. He wants a cheerful giver. God wants us happy all the time. He doesn't want us to be happy and then all of a sudden when it comes time to giving, now you're miserable. You're, you're praising, you're worshiping, you're loving Jesus, and now you get the checkbook out and now you're miserable. Uh, right? That's not how it works, right? You should, when we write out checks, we feel, uh, you know, awesome about it. You know, me and Brenda, and uh, we recommend if you're a couple to, uh, you know, write that out and hold it and pray over it. When we're at conferences, we always do that. We pray over everything. And then when we were in Georgia, we were just talking about some of our giving and say, you know what, we've got to slow our lives down and take time and pray over all our giving so we can enjoy, know what seeds we have planted and enjoy the growth, watching it, watching them harvest. So uh, if you're a couple, pray over it together, um, you know, discuss it, whatever. But uh, giving is biblical and the money here. A few things. If you want to go, we're looking for a property. If you want us to set it aside for the property, uh, you can write property in the corner. My wife will keep that aside. She does it for the animal venture business. Everything goes exactly where it's supposed to go. Or just a general fund. We just help people out that need help. You know. And uh, this time of year, we'll see who needs what. And uh, the church will, uh, will help people out. So if you know people that need a hand right now, um, you know, we have some resources and we'd be happy to, to help. I just want the church to be helping more than the secular world. Because the, the devil's going to like, oh, I can give this much money, the church only give this, and that'll keep you. People, don't, people will rely on people when we're not called to rely on people. We're called to rely on the Lord. And uh, he works through people, but us Christians should, should be, always be the greatest 
happiest, most cheerful givers on the planet. Because we have the most, because we have resources from the Lord. So um, next week we'll have to talk to Kevin and uh, Donna and Dean and Christine and some other people. But we want to start the, um, at least get started before Christmas. We'll probably finish it actually too. Uh, the be- Better Together, uh, How to Build a Marriage That Lasts. This is by Dwayne Sheriff. And it comes with workbooks. The people that come to our class, we're just going to give them to you. If you buy them, go to Dwayne Sheriff. Uh, I don't know if it's .com. I think it's Dwayne Sheriff. And, but they're, they're $16.99. It's a small book, but it does come with a workbook if you buy them. But the people that are doing our course, we're just going to give them. But we only have a few. Uh, so that's going to be a good class. We're going to get that started next week. We have these free cards. There's a couple on the table left. And then um, anything that you see that you want. These are all scriptures. They're really good scriptures. This is Terry Des Ministries. Recommend them highly. And then um, Terra Des Ministries, 39 Reasons Your Healing Is Yours. We, we keep buying these things. Well, they keep sending them to us for free, and we give them out. Because it seems like everybody needs healing. And I know when I'm going through something, I have this by my bed, and I just keep reading it. 39 Scriptures uh, for Healing. And um, then uh, Andrew, that's a free one. And the Andrew Omek uh, Ministries, he's got um, the New You and the Holy Spirit. If you're new to Christianity or you're not sure about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, this is a great book and this is also free. And We can mail them out to you. Then for the people here, we have a bunch of books under the table by uh, Greg Moore and um, you know Andrew and the Terradezes and Dwayne that are for sale. If you don't have the money, we'll give it to you. Um, that's okay. Well, we can afford it. Right, um, but if you want any of these books, if you're watching online, we can just if you e- don't um I always tell you don't use Messenger or any of that stuff. You have to call or email, and we and with your address, and we'll drop it in the mail for you. And we'll pay for shipping and everything. So those are really good books. If anybody here doesn't have these, I think we have several back there in the box. They're very very good. Okay, I think I got all that stuff out of the way. This is Tammy. This is number two. Okay, for people that counting. I get harassed while I preach about how many times I sip my tea. They're actually counting. So <laughs> that was two. But they're going to buy it, get me a... I don't care if you sip them. We just need to get you a holder. Yeah. So you don't disappear. Well, some people need the break. <laughs> Not everybody can look at this face for 30 uh, minutes to an hour straight, right? So who's watching? Anyone? Uh, Jason's watching. Hey, Jason. Uh, Who else? Mary and Tony. Oh, oh, hey, Mary. So just say hi to everyone. Hey, Tony. Hi, everyone. Keep telling you people, if Jason can watch from Spain, you guys can drive a half hour to get here. Tammy, well, yeah. how long does it take you to get here? An hour and 15 minutes. hour and 15 minutes. Abby knows. Right? Abby knows. <laughs> Abby, how old are you? Nine. Abby's nine years old, sits in the car for uh, two and a half hours every Sunday. Uh, has even Didn't she come to Bible study? We even came to a Wednesday night Bible study. Guys, can you shut that door, please? Um, even came to a Wednesday night uh, Bible study and she's nine so if, if a nine year old can sit in a car for two and a half hours to get to church and then have a word from the Lord which she gets every week that she has something to share with us then you guys can all do that no that's my coat you can throw it on the ground if it's in your way alright so I really don't have a title for today um, see the Lord started speaking to me about the Tower of Babel uh, before I went to Georgia, and we were in Georgia, we were in the Word and stuff, but I didn't have time to take notes really on anything, and um, so I've just been praying about it, so I guess if you wanted a title, when you see the title on, on YouTube, it would be Succeed with the Lord, um, if you guys have better titles, let me know, and I'll just change it. I was able to upload the last two weeks onto YouTube, I know YouTube has disintegrated some of my some of our sermons, but a lot of them are still up there, some of them just no longer available, and then I can't save them, they just disappear completely. So those are the ones where I'm probably mm-hmm. telling people I'm anti-vax and anti-listening to the government and, you know, into freedom and not communism and think the and current to an ungodly, ungodly administration, government. the administration of the devil that's in the White House now. So maybe those kind of things, but... I'm not going to stop, and no, they can. They, no one can stop us either, because you know what? They're only brave on. They're only brave on the computer. Mm-hmm. None of them are actually brave mm-hmm. to come here and take my phone off the tripod, right? That ain't going to happen. But Ninja Warrior Alex will be all over them right there, right? I got to do like the backflip first. 
backflip first. Gotta, I was gonna warm up. I, years years ago, I was in a bar. I haven't drank in 25 years now, but years ago I was in a, a big bar room brawl. It was there was quite a few of us, and I had a guy I was training in martial arts, a little older. I'm on the dance floor, and I'm fighting a guy that's like Frankenstein's father, right? Literally drove through his legs and hit him, you know, in the bad spot and jumped on him. Like, it was, he was big. And I look over, because we're outnumbered, for the guy that I've been training for years. You remember who it is, Jim. <laughs> and he's over there doing warm-up exercises. Because he just knew, like, before we, like, we, we, before we fight, we stretch, we do all these exercises. He's over there going through the whole 45-minute class. You know what? The class in Concord, in Chinatown, we fought for hours. In Concord, we fought for the last 10 minutes. I'm like, this dude's got 50 minutes worth of warm-up. <laughs> but, oh, oh, stretching. Yeah. I'm like, we, we, we finished that thing up long before he even got his hint to his hamstring stretched out. So, you know, sometimes you just got to jump in the mix and go for it, right? All right. Probably should talk about Jesus. Um, Genesis uh, chapter 11 verses 1 through 9. And I have a lot of scripture because my, as you can tell, my paraphrases are usually longer than my just reading the scripture out. So I'm just going to read this. Um, it's the Amplified Version. Timmy, is that approved by you? The Amplified Version? All right, got a half a thumbs up. No. That's a good version. I like it. The first Bible I ever bought my daughter was a mistake because she was little. My daughter Val, I went and I'm like, oh, this one really explains things. I bought it the Amplified Version. And people are like, you don't buy a little kid the Amplified Version. So, but I did. Okay, now the whole earth spoke one language and used the same words. And as people journeyed eastward, they found a plain in the land of Shinar and they settled there. They said to one another, Come, let us make bricks and fire them thoroughly in a kiln to harden and strengthen them. So they used brick for stone as building material, and they used tar uh, for mortar. They said, Come, let us build a city for ourselves and a tower whose top will reach into the heavens. And let us make uh, a famous name for ourselves so that we will not be scattered into separate groups and be dispersed over the surface of the earth of the entire earth as the Lord instructed. So I'm going to go through it, then I'm going to go back and pick it apart a little bit. Now the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the sons of men had built. And the Lord said, Behold, they are one unified people, and they all have the same language. This is only the beginning of what they will do in rebellion against me. And now no evil thing they imagine they can do will be impossible for them. Come, let us, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, go down and and there and confuse and mix up their language so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the surface of the entire earth, and they stopped building the city. Therefore the name of the city was Babel, because the Lord confused the language of the entire earth, and from that place the Lord scattered and dispersed them over the surface of all the earth. Now some people read that and um, they question, they have a lot of questions, like why did God scatter them like shouldn't we work together because the bible talks a lot about unity and christians coming together and you see in the book of acts where they're all of one accord right um the big difference there is in the book of acts they're they're all one accord with the lord at the center see if you if you go back here um there's words like rebellion and that's why i chose the amplified version and disobedience if you're unified being disobedient to the lord that's not a good thing Right, and we're going to cover some of that. So we're going to go back and just look at uh, verse. Wait a minute. At verse four, they said, "Come, let us build a city for ourselves." That's the problem, right? Because the Lord says we're supposed to build stuff for the Lord. You can't. So these people here were focused just on themselves. And if you, we're going to hit this uh, as we go through it, but. Anything that we do, the Lord needs to be part of. And you can see here, let's build it for ourselves. And a tower whose top will reach into the heavens. And when you look at that word, heavens, in the original translation, it's really like when they're talking about, um, it's really the sky, like the, the lower heavens. Um, really, you could translate it the sky. It's not into, you know, where God is, because... I'm sure with today's bricks, we could get to heaven no problem, right? If that was true. Um, 
It says, let us make a famous name for ourselves. And there's another big issue. It, today, it, you know, in business, in life, it can be in anything you want to do, sports, right? There are some sports figures out there today. Um, you know, I, I record and watch the hockey games, and, you know, if I don't hit fast forward fast enough or if I'm watching it live, I have to you know, hit mute. There are a few sports figures that are so anti-American and building everything for themselves, and God is nowhere in sight. And, um, you know, we'll talk about what their future is, but... You, we are not. It's okay if you're really good at a sport or you know run a business. It's okay to for people to know you and, and to brand yourself. I'm not saying that, but um, we're not called to make ourselves famous. Christians are called to make Jesus famous, mm -hmm. right? That's what we're called to do. And um, and it says here, so that we will not be scattered into separate groups and will and be dispersed over the surface of the entire earth as the Lord instructed. So they know what the Lord told them to do. They're not hiding it. They're saying, hey, this is what the Lord told us to do, but we're going to do our own thing. I'm going to build my own business. You know, Josh said, you know what, I'm going to be a graphic designer, but people are down on Christians right now, and they think we're weird, especially when he started his business here in Massachusetts. I think, uh, I think I'd better do it and just bring it under the car, Michael, and his Colleen's super smart. She can help me with that. And, and we'll just, we don't need the Lord. He could have done that. And he probably would have been successful for a while. But you know what? Eventually he'd feel that empty space and he, he'd know that he's not doing what the Lord told him to do. So his business is focused on the Lord. Right, Josh? Mm -hmm. Totally. And, and they, they have, you know, they're doing very well. Bought a home and uh, have a nice car and raising a wonderful kid. Caleb, you're wonderful, right? Yep, he says he is. So, every we want things instantly, right? But sometimes it's a process. They didn't just start his business today and buy a house tomorrow. They had to leave, right? They were called to leave Massachusetts. So lucky. Um, not supposed to be jealous or want to covet your neighbor's stuff. But man, if the Lord said to me, go to Virginia or someplace, especially now it's they got a Republican governor in there. Not that all Republicans are good. There's a lot of rhinos, so I'm not a, I'm not a, I'm a registered, what do we call that, Brenda? Charlie Baker. Unenroll, yeah, Charlie the Faker. I mean, uh, so, uh, so he did just get us out of that gas tax, so that was good, right? He did, I'll give him credit, give credit where credit's due. He pulled us out of the TCI, so, uh, but you know what, you, it says here, and be dispersed over the surface of the, of the earth as the Lord instructed. So they're going in direct disobedience from the Lord, even when the disciples um, were going against uh, the Pharisees and the Sadducees and they went out to, I think it was uh, Galilee or Galileo, and they said, what should we do? We should kill these people. And he said, wait a minute, wait a minute, people. If, if it is from, and he mentioned all the people that uh, had come up before and said they were prophets and they all dispersed, right? And then he said, if it's not of God, it'll go away. If it's of God, pretty funny you guys if it's of God then you'll find yourself fighting against God so if you do something and you're going against the Lord you're not going to win that battle you know you might be successful in uh, worldly things for a while but you're not going to win that battle um, let's look at a couple of scriptures below here just to um, go with that, because I don't like to just talk and not back it up with scriptures. 1 Corinthians 10.31, New King James, Therefore, we're, we're, whatever, whether you eat or drink, or whatever you do, do it, do it all to the glory of God. So he's not just talking about, the Lord's not talking about just building an empire with his name. He's saying, whether you eat or drink, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. So that's why you bless your food, right? It's not to, should blessing your food shouldn't be a religious thing, but it reminds you that, hey, the Lord provided this meal. And then if you're eating, you know, like we're probably all going to overeat this week, I'm absolutely going to overeat this week and then starve myself till Christmas and overeat again and then try to get normal after that. I have it all planned out, you know? <laughs> so, um, but we're going to bless our food and we're going to pray over it because we're going to be eating a lot of sweets with a lot of stuff in there. I don't know what Christine's bringing me, but probably a lot. Probably a lot of stuff over there, right? I have no idea. And Colleen's here, so, I don't know, red velvet cupcakes or cream cheese? Probably, right? So we're going to pray over that, and, and, and when we eat it, it's going to become supernaturally okay, okay? Um, 
Colossians 3.23, New King James, and whatever you do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not to men. We're not called, now sure, you want to please your boss, right? But if you're doing it to the Lord, your boss is going to be very happy with you. If you're working like you're working for God, if all my employees are like, oh man, they get in here and they thank you, Jesus, for this job, this place is blessed, it's highly favored, you know, I'm blessed to be here, and uh, I'm going to work, whether it's sweeping the floor, cleaning poop, or doing an animal pre presentation, I'm going to work as I'm working for the Lord. I guarantee I would have a lot less complaints when I walked through there, mm -hmm. right? My, my list would go, wow, people are awesome. They don't even need me, right? And that's, that's my goal is to become not needed over here. Um, I just want to go back a little bit when they're talking about making themselves famous. I'm going to read a bunch of scripture here just to get to a point, just because, again, I think it'll be better. But Acts uh, 3, verses uh, uh, 4 and through 13, this is when Peter and John, they, they healed the crippled man. And so if you pick up in verse 4, four it says, Peter and John looked at him, looking at the cripple, uh, at him intently, and Peter said, look at us. The lame man looked at, the, looked at him eagerly, expecting some money. Because he's outside gate beautiful, just begging for money, begging for money. And Peter got his attention said, look at us, right? Make some eye contact here. Don't be distracted. Get your mind off of what you think you need and let me give you what the Lord says you need. Which is, the Lord is going to give you much better things than you think, uh, than you can come up with on your own. The lame man looked at them eagerly, expecting some money. But Peter said, <clears throat> I don't have any silver or gold for you, but I'll give you what I have. In the name of Jesus Christ the Nazarene, get up and walk. Then Peter took the lame man by the right hand and helped him up. And as he did, the man's feet and ankles were instantly healed and strengthened. He jumped up, stood on his feet, and began to walk. Then walking, leaping, and praising God, he went into the temple with them. All the people saw him walking and heard him praising God. When, he, when they realized he was the lame beggar they had seen so often at the beautiful gate. They were absolutely astounded. They all rushed out in amazement to Solomon's colonnade where the man was holding tightly to Peter and John. Peter saw his opportunity and addressed the crowd. People of Israel, he said, what is, it, what is so surprising about this and why stare at us as though we had made this man walk by our own power <clears throat> or godliness? For it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of all, of all our ancestors, who has brought glory to his servant, Jesus, by doing this. <clears throat> Excuse me. The same Jesus whom you handed over and rejected before Pilate, despite Pilate's decision to release him. So <clears throat> let's go back and look at this a little bit. Uh, there's so much here, but I want to stay, that I've taught in this scripture a lot in a lot of different ways, I just want to kind of stay on uh, focus. Uh, but I just will mention, as a side note, the same power that Jesus raised Jesus from the grave, the same power that Jesus was, was flowing through Peter when he grabbed the man, is in us. There, there's no reason we cannot see a crippled person, right, and pray and have them be healed. Now, um, you know, we are, we are struggling with, with some of that ourselves in our, in our life, God will reveal to us why. But the Holy Spirit, you might walk by a hundred crippled people, right? A hundred sick people, whatever. And the Holy Spirit might say, that one's right. he'll show you who, to re who will receive. So the Holy you have to have a word. You can't run into a hospital and rip people out of beds because that ain't going to work. But I guarantee, when they looked at it, the Holy Spirit told them, make eye contact and this is going to be the outcome. So that's why we have to hear and obey God. And if we can't, you know, we got people telling us you can't hear and obey God. You didn't hear the Holy Spirit. God didn't tell you not to get a vaccine. You got to listen to that and go, you know what, maybe God didn't. Because people are going to waver. Like the devil said, did God really say, right? And that's the, the devil is working through the people at uh, uh, Bristol Myers Squibb. Guarantee it. You're, those people that are listening to, the, they're demonic. They're listening to the devil. Because you, hey, I'll say it because you either have the spirit of Christ or the Antichrist. There's no middle. Well, I'm not a Christian, but I'm not anti I don't have the spirit of Antichrist. Yes, you do. You're one or the other. It's like that, like in school when you're the last kid picked. You don't want to go. Maybe that team doesn't want you, and you don't want. Maybe you don't want to go on that team, but that's your team because you didn't get. You're out. You don't make a decision. You want to go and be play for the devil's team, play for his team. You're going to lose, um, but go ahead and play. You want to be on Jesus' team? Just say I, I want to be on Jesus' team. But you, if you start listening, because the devil's going to say. 
I'm sure they, I'm sure, you know, the thoughts came to my daughter, you know, is it definitely God? Am I sure? Right? The devil can mess with you, but she stood. Yes, it's from the Lord. Do not get the vaccine. And so, if you can't listen to the Lord with that, how are you going to listen to the Lord when it comes to grabbing a crippled man and getting him up? You've got to listen to the Lord. And um, you guys all know, uh, the. I don't think the Lord's ever going to tell you to put poison in your body produced by the United States government, right? With the big pharmaceutical companies that we can trust. No, we can't, actually. We can't trust them. So, I'll just look at it this way. Do you really trust the government? When they say in Massachusetts the tolls are temporary and 40 years later they're going up, just show me in any place where the government has given their word and actually delivered. It's going to be few and far between. So why trust them with your life? Side note. Think about it. Um, and see, so Peter here, think about this, right? The other people are saying we're going to make a name, we're going to make ourselves famous. We're going to make a name for us, 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 right? And what did Peter say? Why stare at us? Right? Peter is deflecting. And, you know, I know preachers that, you know, uh, people are, you know, worshiping and praising them and it, you can't just, it's hard to fight it all off. There's a balance. But you, our goal is to always deflect to Jesus every single time. Why stare at us as though we made this man walk by our own, by our own power and godliness? No one in this room, no one in the world can lay hands on someone and have them healed um, without the power of Jesus. Now, the devil has, you know, misled some people, but if you want a true healing spirit out, right, why have a, a hand healed by a charlatan and still have the devil spirit, right? You, that's, that's just trickery, sorcery that we don't, that we don't want to get involved in. Um, like fortune tellers and all. People say, what's wrong with the fortune teller? Because they're not telling you, they're, not, they're telling you, they're not in tune with, they're not hearing the, the they're not a, uh, the sheep of Jesus. They're not hearing his voice. They're hearing a wrong voice and giving you other things. And they can give you nuggets that go, wow, I had one before I knew I went to a fortune teller many, many years ago and they told me something that was true and, and stuff and I don't know, you know, um, but if you get you get hooked on that, and why, why sit and read the Bible all day when you can pay fifteen dollars or whatever it is and go to a fortune teller and, and hear your future, right? Why sit and, and pray? So that's just another trick of the devil. For it is the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the God of our ancestors who brought glory to His servant Jesus. Jesus by doing this, um, that's key. Everything we do, everything we do, should bring glory to Christ. Right, and that's you know we like to joke and have fun and do all those kind of things, and, and that's fine. But at the end of the day, um, you can't be ashamed of Jesus and what we do is for Him. Last night I come over here just to, with the with my friends and just to relax, and I end up doing a tour, and um, so um, out there the couples talking to me, asking me questions, and they have their, their couple of kids, I think two or three kids with them, and they're asking me about the cat and their stories, and I was telling them about Aslan, and I said, yeah, he had health issues, and, and I told them how he had a hole in his larynx and things like that, and there's no medical treatment for that, and they said, oh, how do you get fixed, like what happened? And I said, oh, well, I said, we're, you know, we're a Christian, we're a prayerful family, so we prayed over him, and um, that's the only explanation, because I talk to vets, I even talk to pediatricians, I've talked to everyone, and there's no cure for that. There's nothing they could do. And so we prayed, and he got supernaturally healed. Same with his leg. I mean, um, they said with his leg joint, eventually over many years, it may outgrow, but it happened like, he doesn't outgrow like that, you know? So uh, at first, you know, you're there, and you, and you can catch yourself going, should I tell them? But of course you should tell them. Of course, mm -hmm. the, Lord he the Lord healed your animal, um, Sky, could you shut that door all the way for me, please? Uh, the Lord healed the animal. Um, thank you. Why wouldn't you share that? Why wouldn't we be glory to, to... I could have said, well, you know, me and my wife, we just have these methods, this way things just seem to work out, you know. Um, we are the animal people. But no, why not give glory uh, where it's due to the Lord? Because without the Lord, that animal... I guarantee you, without the Lord, that animal's not, not alive. And Alex was here. He's seen all that. So many animals that have been healed here. You know, not all of them, but you know, 
the people say, well, well, I did that one, that one, that one. I don't have all the answers, but I know the ones that did, mm -hmm. right? So, hey, one is better than none, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. So, um, so the main part there was just Peter really taking the um, focus off himself. And then when we get into the last part when they, of verse 4, when they said, the Lord told us to do this, but we're not going to do it. That's direct rebellion. In Genesis, and they knew, in Genesis 1.28, that God blessed them and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply, fill the earth and subdue it, have dominion over the fish of the earth, of the uh, fish of the sea, over the birds of the air, and over every living thing that moves. So right here, then the Lord blessed them uh, and God said to them, be fruitful, multiply, fill the earth. They only made it to one spot. And they're like, we're going to stay right here. And we're going to make ourselves famous and make ourselves important. Now, when you read on through Genesis, you'll see that uh, these uh, um, Noah had sons and sons of his sons that were all part of this. And in Genesis 9-7, um, the Lord speaking to Noah, says, And as for you, be fruitful, multiply, bring forth abundantly in the earth and multiply in it. So he's telling them again in Genesis, and these descendants of Noah that are directly involved with the building of the Tower of Babel, that they're supposed to be fruitful, multiply, and spread across the earth. And they're being in direct disobedience uh, to, the, to the Lord. Um, let me just scroll up here to verse 6. If I can scroll and not delete, that would be good. Um, so verse 6, it says, The Lord said, Behold, they are uh, of one unified people, and they all have the same language. This is only the beginning of what they, this is key, this is only the beginning of what they will do in rebellion against me, and no evil thing they imagine they can do will be impossible for them. So sometimes doors are getting shut in our lives, and we're like, come on. And the Lord, out of his mercy and grace, is like going, stupid. There's like a, a ditch there, you know? And he's helping shut the doors and Navi, he's not going to control our lives completely but he the Lord loves us so much we think we're running full blast and we're going to go off a cliff and that door shuts so like oh man I was so close to, to glory I was so close to success why did that door shut and you pray for the door to open pray I, I pray for the Lord to show me which doors to kick down because I've kicked down the wrong door before and I'm sure everybody here has kicked down the wrong door and you get there and there's no, there's no gold at the end of that, of that rainbow, right? And so you have to, that's why it's so important you spend time with the Lord because he will tell you, don't kick that door down. I shut that door for you. Go, go this way. And of course, Christianity is a course correction. Um, but you know what? Why not get more doors, you know, go through the right door more often than not? Um, so that's just very important that, um, you know, we're not in direct rebellion and that the Lord, when things don't open, sure, may, they might have battles, but you have to know which, which, battles, uh, which battles to fight, which doors to open. And that's why it's so crucial that you spend time, I can't say enough how important it is just to spend time uh, with the Lord, in the Word, meditating, sitting quietly. Because um, here it says, it, you know, in rebellion against me, and now no evil thing they imagine uh, they can do will be impossible for them. The Lord is trying to get them, steer them away from doing evil. So he had to uh, scatter them. Um, and we'll just go here, and this scripture the Lord just kind of added to me last minute, but in Isaiah 14, 12 through 15, uh, it's the, the fall of Lucifer. And it says, how you are, are fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning. How you are cut down to the ground, you who weaken the nations. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. Sounds familiar, right? <laughs> that Tower of Babel, trying to, I will ascend into heaven. Uh, I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will also sit on the, on the mount of the congregation on the farthest sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will make the most high... I'll, I'll be like the Most High, yet you shall be brought down to Shaul, to the lowest depths of the pit. And so, here's an example of Satan, you know, Lucifer at the time, and he's saying what he's going to do. He's making a name for himself, right? He is, the people, the pe tower, people who are building the Tower of Babel, as I was just doing babbling there, um, you can see they, they literally use the same, the same words as Satan. For you have said in your heart, I will ascend into heaven. And 
Um, so you know they're not listening to God when they're in rebellion, going against God, and, and being bold about being rebellious. And you see that today. A lot of people are bold in their rebellion against the Lord. And I'll pray for them, but I'm not going to waste time begging them to come to church. You know, I'm not going to chase them around. Look at Jesus and the disciples. Jesus didn't chase after anybody. You, you, you want everlasting life? Here I am. You want to go with your father, the devil? Go ahead. Right? Don't want you to. But I, you gotta, you gotta know. It's just like praying for someone. You gotta get a word. Are they gonna get up out of that wheelchair? Or are they not? Right? Um, you don't want to be ripping people out of the wheelchair and having them fall on you. But if the Lord tells you to do it, then you'll be fine. Um, so we got to understand. You know, don't. I don't want to sound insensitive, but don't put all your efforts. In, in you know 90% of your time trying to convince someone to love Jesus you know there's a lot of people out there you know that will love that you know will, will be open to the word and hear it our uh, people that mentor and pastor us uh, Van and Regina they were flying home from Dallas and they're they've been married 42 years they're holding hands they're very loving you know they they don't have other businesses they have to run so they're together all the time and a guy sat in the plane next to him, a younger kid, I think, said in his 30s. And he said, are you guys like newly married or whatever? Like, how are you guys like so happy? And he said, oh, you know, our relationship is based on the Lord. And the guy said, well, I'm engaged. And I kind of, how do you get like that, you know? And they spent the time talking about our, you know, Jesus is, uh, is we're on fire for Jesus. And we just go together with that. And we just, you know, read the word, obey the word, uh, live the word. And um, before that, he got off the plane, that young man gave his life to Christ. Amen. Right? So, how cool is that? Now, I guarantee, you won't meet two people that show love on you more than Van and Regina, right? Uh, they hug a lot. <laughs> and so, um, and, but I guarantee if that person was sitting there going, don't want to hear it, don't want to hear it, shut up, don't want to hear it, they was okay, they're not going to sit there and beg the guy for three hours. You know, they're going to just, they're just going to sit there and be themselves. And maybe their light will, you know, shine on them a little and just plant a seed. But uh, and I know we want to reach out to family. And I, I keep planting seeds, but the argue, you're not going to argue someone into, into the kingdom. Uh, 2 Corinthians 5.10, New King James, uh, says, And here's the thing. Here's the reason why God came down and confused uh, the, the language. It was out of his great love and mercy. And same thing today, when doors are shut, we just need to be sensitive. Like I said, there are some doors that we're going to have to kick down because it's the devil and other doors that the Lord's closing uh, for our mercy. Because ultimately, 2 Corinthians 5.10, New King James, for we must all stand before Christ to be judged. We will each receive whatever we deserve for the good or evil we have done on this, in this earthly body. So, it's... At the end of the day, and, and you know, a lot of people, even myself, I never like to talk about heaven and hell because it's not popular, you know, it's not always feel good. But at the end of the day, you can build your giant corporations, and we're going to stop in a minute. Next week, we're going to get into a lot more in depth. But you can build all these things, and at the end of the day, if you build it without the Lord, it doesn't matter if you're going to play like my son Josh wants to play in the NHL, right? It, you can play the NHL, you can coach in the NHL, you can, uh, or if things change and they want to do something, something else, um, I know uh, Giovanna wants to run the facility, um, Noelle's trying to decide why she's out of bed, so we'll figure, she's 14, she has some time to decide, right? Like, Am I really out of bed already? It's not even noon, right? So um, it's everybody has different things, but whatever you accomplish, no matter how great and wonderful it is, if God's not part of it, it'll never be as great and wonderful as it could have been. And then the end's really terrible because you can be su as successful as you want in this earth, and which is like God says, it's, it's like a blink of an eye, right? And then at the end, all your money doesn't go with you, all your houses, all your TVs, it doesn't go with you, and then you go to hell for eternity. That's, that's not good. And so the one thing on that note, and I'm going to end um, where the Lord showed me, when I said, you know, I first got saved, and I said, I want to be um, the best Christian, the best husband, the best father, and... Um, you know, the Lord was quite bold with me because sometimes you need that, that boldness. He said, you can be the greatest father in the world. 
and you can give your kids everything and they can live a hundred healthy years. But if you don't tell them about me and then they spend eternity away from me, you didn't do a very good job. And so I, I'm not trying to guilt parents and stuff out there, but you might think you're super dad, super mom, you're at the hockey game, the dance studio, you've got a beautiful house, you drive a wonderful car, everybody's envious you know, of, of you know, your 10-bedroom house, whatever it is, but you're not teaching your kids about the Lord. You're, you're not doing a good job. And, um, you, know, you can get angry all you want. Um, you know I'm past the point of caring, right? So, um, so have at it. But if you don't teach your children about the Lord, and it can be frustrating as a parent, trust me, you know, getting my kids to come to church, it's not, other than Giovanna, it's not an, an easy task, you know. G, just, G comes because she knows if I give it a stern voice, she'll cry, and she doesn't like to cry, right? <laughs> um, Josh is like, you've got to be kidding me, you know. Uh, but he gets it. We talk when we drive, and so it's not, church doesn't have to just be on Sunday. We talk about the Lord all the time, you know, how to help his friends and be the light and all that. And uh, same with Noel. We spend time talking about uh, Christ, but as as a pastor, as a father, a husband, you, you can't let you know your kids uh, getting aggravated with you about talking about Jesus. Dad, can you just shut up about Jesus? No. If I if I if I stop talking to my children about Jesus, know what that means? That means I've given up on them. It means that I think that I've made them liking me or keeping my house smooth and easy more important than my children's eternity, right? So if I get there, let me know. I'm not there yet. <laughs> so, there's <laughs> times I debate it. No. Um, so, it's not being overbearing, and it's not, I'm not talking about standing on your soapbox, you're going to hell, you know, and nobody wants, nobody wants, what do you call those, Bren? I know it's not politically correct. Excuse me? Religiotards. Religiotards. Nobody wants to listen to a religiotard. So, um, yeah, I got that word from Jen Johnson. Bethel Church in California. I heard that. I heard the word religiotard in California, okay? So I can use it in Massachusetts. Again, if you don't like it, don't have to listen to it. Um, so that's where I'm going to stop today. And as we go through the week, just think about if you're working for somebody and you hate your job, just focus on Jesus. Like Tammy was saying, right? Keep the eye, keep focused on Jesus as we, as we go through life. And it's got some, some days... Trust I love the fact that I own a business, but lately, every day, it just seems like, it just seems like I really need to focus on the Lord, you know? Because you can go, you know what? I'm just going to put a big for sale sign on everything and simplify my life, you know? But if you stay focused on Jesus, he reminds you, this was your dream as a kid, to work with animals and to do all these things. Um, so stay focused on the Lord. If anybody has not given... Um, the life to Jesus is very easy. You just need to um, believe that he died for your sins and was raised three days later. And that's it. You say, Jesus, I believe you died for my sins on the cross and three days later you were raised by God's Holy Spirit and I ask you to come into my heart and to let's do life together. And if you say that prayer and you can say it with us, we can pray for you, you can say it by yourself, then you need some resources. You need, um, like this book here, the new you and the Holy Spirit, and it's free. We buy them, we pay for these, but we give them away because we really want you to have them. And the other thing is the church has done a terrible job of having people give their life to Christ and not mentioning the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Why be saved and go to heaven and walk through life without the power? If you give your life to Jesus, go all the way. You need the baptism of the Holy Spirit, which is a separate a baptism, a separate infilling, and the scriptures in this book will show it, uh, show it out. And think about it. Jesus did nothing until he got full of the Holy Spirit. He spent time building himself up, right? He didn't do any miracles until he received the Holy Spirit. Then the Father even said to Jesus, Jesus even said to the disciples, it's better that I go. You're hanging out with Jesus in the flesh. It can't get any better. But Jesus is with you. Where you go, he's there. Then Jesus said, it's better that I go so the Father can send the help of the Holy Spirit. Right uh, to be with you, you need the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Now, that comes with the evidence of speaking in tongues. So if you want to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, again, you, we know people that are filled with the Holy Spirit in the shower, by themselves, uh, 
oh, we can come and pray for you. Or if you're too far away, we can pray for you to receive the Holy Spirit over the phone. But you just have to say, Holy Spirit, I know you're real. I ask you to fill me. I always say, fill me to overflow. Because I want to overflow in me onto other people. And then you stop moving your mouth, your, your lips. And you're not, not going to pry your lips open. And how many people here can pray in the Spirit? Let's pray in the Spirit for 10 seconds. Ready? Can we pray loud so people can... And then you just pray in tongues. Ready? Santa Karama Mamba Bakurin de la Baba Sande Mamba Bodin de la Kurulon de la Baba Sadriama. Soda the Yame Mamba Kirin de la Bokurulon de la Baba Sande Mamba Marian. Thank you, Jesus. You, he doesn't overtake you, but I will tell you, I get words of knowledge and uh, prophetic words 99% of the time when I'm praying in the Spirit. So, um, and that's it. So you, you need that. Have a blessed day. Please reach out if you need us. Go in uh, our website, zoo.church. That's the whole thing. It's not zoo.church. It's zoo.church. My cell phone's number is on there. Brenda's cell phone's number is on there. And the email to the church. Have a blessed week. See you soon.